Welcome to ABL Hot Corner Christmas Special. Christmas hat. I would never would have picked that. <laughs> the show that brings you all the good stuff from around the Australian Baseball League. This week, Jamie Jagger Cloden and myself, Brooke Forrest Kilpatrick, are sporting some uniforms from our sponsor, Bayside Sportswear. So if you all your sportswear needs, if you need baseball uniforms for upcoming Masters Series or your club, get onto the Bayside Sportswear website, hit up Stephen and Lauren and they'll hook you up. And for those that aren't colour blind and realise that this isn't the normal Adelaide bike top, this was a special one off uh, to promote Canteen. So, um, and I think it's raised quite a lot of money. It did, that and, night, uh, yeah. and the boys played pretty well in it too. And they they got did. W that night, they so did. get on it. And for those astute viewers out here that are wondering uh, what has happened to Norwood Oval, well, you're correct, we're not at Norwood Oval tonight, we are in fact at the Sporty's Bar at the Arca Bar. So thanks to Sporty's Bar at the Arca Bar for Thank having us along, and we're having a couple of refreshments to celebrate the Christmas season. So to the Arca Bar, thumbs up, thanks so much. Thank you much. kindly. All right, kicking things off for around the league, first series, we had the uh, Brisbane Bandits at Canberra Cavalry, the top of the, top of the three table. series. Yeah. And Going into it, Canberra held a one-game lead, mm -hmm. and they still do. It was a two-two split. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a fantastic series. Friday night, uh, Bandits came out, defeated Canberra quite comfortably, six to four, mm -hmm. and they racked up 14 hits. And would you believe, nine of them were off. Off Brian Granning. Brian Granning, unbelievable. Um, so Brizzy jumped all over in there. Home runs to T.J. Bennett, uh, Justin Williams, and Donald Lutz. He's starting to warm it up. He is a scary thing for the league. Certainly is. And the Bennett's bullpen combined, they just shut it down with four to shut out ball, mm -hmm. which was just unbelievable. So Ryan Searle came in for the eighth save, yeah. which ties Cody Kirsty in the bite. And it was all said and done. So Brisbane over the line game one. Yeah, and they're, they're looking good too. Like say all the big bats were, were heating up for the series. There's ominous signs. 14 hits, quite impressive. Then mm -hmm. Saturday had the twin bill. Yes. In the early game, Steve Fitty Kent on the hill. Good man. Yep. He said no more Brizzy, shut this down. And he won his sixth game of the season, which ties the league lead as well with uh, Stevie Chambers of Adelaide. Yes. And uh, Kent pitched six digs, conceded eight hits, but just one earned run. So he was pretty impressive once Very again. Impressive, yeah. Uh, River Stevens had three hits. Yep. David Harris had a double on a single. And continues to lead the league by the length of the straight and hitting. Had a good weekend mm. again. And yeah. uh, Jason Leb Libijon. Mm -hmm. Did the job again with three RBI and he led the offense as well. So it was an 8 1 win to the Cavs. Made it 1 uh, 1. Yep, lay one at the twin The late one and Brizzy turned the tables once again. Yep. So uh, they jumped on the Cavalry starter who was Wade Corpy. Mm -hmm. had, a, had a mare. A big blow was a grand slam. Donald Lutz. He's really heating up, isn't he? Did it again. And uh, they racked up a phenomenal 17 hits. That's unreal. Uh, Lutz, Unro, and Max Tissenbaum had three hits each. Mm -hmm. Um, and Braylon Jackson, Justin Williams, Ryan Battaglia, the old battle star. Battle star Battaglia. Had two apiece and uh, Jason Jarvis got the win. He was pretty pretty good, rolled through eight innings of four hit ball, considered just two earned runs. But just such a consistent starter this year, hasn't he? So the top of the table was tied mm -hmm. uh, as of Saturday night. But then on Sunday? Came out Sunday, switch it again. Mm -hmm. um, Josh Warner lasted just one pitch. What a st is that a quality start? Does that come down well, to that? Gotta feel sorry for the guy. Through one pitch, hit uh, David Harris in the helmet. Mm -hmm. uh, it was an all-in. Bench is cleared, and uh, Dave, poor old uh, Dave, got ejected. Yeah. And sorry, Josh got ejected. Yeah. And with the one pitch, because uh, the runner that came on had to be a pinch runner because Harris charging got ejected as well. Yes. Run scored, so we actually got the loss in the game as well. And he only threw one pitch. Uh, it's yeah. a pretty tough day out. Yeah, a bit of a story behind that with uh, supposedly a lot of chirping and everything going on beforehand. And yeah, a bit I reckon of, there was a bit of yap before. A bit of banter. Just looking at it, it, it didn't look like he meant to do it. Yeah. He sort of like threw the hands up like that, but you know, who knows? You don't really know. No. So yeah, a few blo I think there's four guys in total toss, but the interesting part yeah. was there seemed to be one guy running out there that wasn't wearing a uniform. So stay tuned for more on that in the league during the week. Interesting. Because that is uh, definitely a no-go. Mm -hmm. Alright. Um, now, it was a pretty bizarre game because the Cavs scored five runs and he had three hits. Yeah. So he constructed him pretty well. Uh, Jack Murphy knocked him two with a timely double. Scotty Cohn was good on the hill again for Canberra. So he started to really ramp it up. Excuse me, I'm just getting into the festive yeah, spirit no, of my Yeah, fair enough, as you have to. So he pitched uh, six shutout digs. 
uh, four strikeouts and a five zip win for the Cavs, mm -hmm. and that meant a series split, and they kept the one game lead at the top of the table. Which, a couple of weeks ago, we would have thought going into Christmas, five, six games. Perhaps. They were lights out, they had about a yeah. five game lead not too long ago, so it's uh, getting, busy, real to mid. Getting sweat last week combined with Brisbane being in pretty good nick has yeah. really brought it tight. So for the Cavs, mm -hmm. I mean, they maintain that one game leader they had before the series started, mm -hmm. so they'd be pretty happy. Uh, and Scotty Cohn, as he's good. very good again, yeah. and out of his last three starts, he's had two very good ones. Mm -hmm. So he's added to their pitching staff. Um, Canberra pitchers now lead the league with five shutouts, and they've got four complete games. Yeah. So they're rolling, having those uh, quality quality outings that uh, still put them to start the top. Rest that bullpen too. As far as the hitters go, uh, mm -hmm. Team OPS, which is on base plus slugging, a really good sort of uh, tool yep. to judge how they're hitting. They've got a uh, OPS of 0.801, that's tops in the ABL. So they're not just doing it with the ball, doing it with the bats. And uh, like I said, stay tuned, there might be a little bit of fallout this Interesting, week. Interesting, yeah. Uh, from the league, so who knows what we'll, they'll be taking in the next series. Yeah, yeah, so I guess. Go. Well, looking at the bandit side of things, um, as I said, they were having a real crack. They, uh, they looked like they were sort of in the mix, but still, still that little way back from Canberra. But now they're uh, they're really taking it up to them, and uh, a split for them with Canberra in Canberra. Being on the road, you'd think they'd be pretty happy with yeah, that. Yeah, they would be very happy yeah. to be to still right in touch. Yeah, and um, I think that the the big thing to come out of it for me, you've got um, real enough. Justin Williams, Max Chisholm, Mitch Nielsen, Riley Unruh, Goofy Sutherland, Braylon Jackson. They got all these names. They throw a lot of bats at you, don't they? And then you insert Donald Lutz into that. Yeah. And as we say, a couple couple long balls. He's starting to warm up. That lineup is looking pretty good. You like them, they're, and they're fun to watch. Mm. They've really been impressive over the last sort of few series. Yeah. And, and these no. two teams are looking like teams to be. I, I think so. Although, I mean, the Blue Sox are starting to play yeah, some balls as well, but these yeah. these two so far, they're the pick of the litter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. Um, like I said before, that just that back of that uh, bullpen, mm. they got they throw four guys uh, Crawford now in the mix, yes. middle, middle relief, then go to Tim's. Uh, Green and Searle, you want to have dominant. the lead earlier or else you're not going to get it back. Very much so, yeah. No, de definitely, like we say, they, these are the two pace setters and uh, look forward to seeing them fight it out, I reckon. Some fun baseball for yeah, sure. Yeah, for sure. Good stuff. Jenga, you were able to see the Melbourne Aces at the Sydney Blue Sox. I was. How did that one go? Yeah, well, um, going into the series, Sydney been on fire lately. In Fuego. Yes. <laughs> For you Spanish viewers out there. Sorry, throwing me a bit there. Oh, nah, still enough to comprehend. Um, yes, Sydney definitely looked like the form team, and Melbourne really struggling at the, at the uh, bottom of the table. So you would have thought Sydney probably going in as favourites. and. Um, well, game one was um, that was an up and down affair. With um, Sydney took the chocolates in the end with a five three, so it was a very, very close close one. Um, Matthew Ray was the starter. He put in a solid solid five innings. Um, struck out six, only allowed two runs, of which only one of those was there. It was his first start of the season, too. And it? yeah, it was very very solid. Put a really good performance before handing it over the bullpen. Um, Batting wise, Trent D'Antonio has been on fire lately. Unbelievable. And just cannot kept, stop the man. Yeah, just kept it rolling with uh, in the leadoff spot with a three hit game. Um, for the Aces, it was really just the one bright spot, and that was Daryl George going four for four. The, um, Bowling green, hot rods. The, the hot rods, and uh, just a home run short of the cycle. So he got the he got the tough one. He got the triple out of the way. Yeah, nice. But uh, he couldn't get the four striker. So, um, so that was game one, Sydney five three. Um, now game two, you look at the on, on paper, you look at it, Craig Anderson versus Yasuo San, Sano. Um, had all the makings of the pitchers duel. Um, but it really wasn't that way. It didn't turn out that way. Quite a one-sided affair with uh, with Craig Anderson dominating. Sano, another fantasy baseball disaster. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you where <laughs> with that look on your face. <laughs> um, Craig Anderson just dominated. Seven inning complete game shutout. Yeah. Um, allowed just two two base hits. They hit a guy. So the three three base runners for the for the Got game. One for fun. Yep. Yeah. Um, and it, again, offensively, Dan, Dan, Dan Antonio again. Terence Trent D'Antonio. That's him. He was. Fantastic. Two for two with, yep. uh, with a couple of RBIs for good measure. So that was a, a 5 0 win for the Blue Sox there. Anderson just was yeah, it was out. Very impressive. Yeah. As he can do it, like he just shuts teams down, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. just, yep. He does, Uses yeah. He's the strike zone, smart guy. And it's been done for a long time. Yeah, yep. yep. Game through was Melbourne's turn. They, they came back for a 7 uh, 3 win. They picked up the W. 
uh, as um, their star hurler from last week, Matty Larkins. One of our boys, Matty yep. Larkins, just, and, uh, just keeps rolling through, doesn't he? He did, he came up big again, seven strong innings on the way to, a, to the, like I say, the 7-3 seven, three, seven, three victory. Um, and just to, just to show off their bullpen, I suppose, the 8th and 9th, they uh, they used Shane Lindsay and Virgil Vasquez. Rolled Shane to, out just to show that he can uh, still bring it. So obviously it wasn't a safe situation for Virgil, but he yeah. came in the ninth and, and was able to shut it down again. So it just, it just goes to show that if those starters, as Matty Larkins has been doing and Sano has been doing at different times, if these guys can get to their bullpen with a lead, that's how they're going to get yeah. their wins. Yep. Yeah. Um, so offensively, it was uh, last week's hot hitter, Logan Moon. Logan Moon. Yeah, did yeah, it again. He um, four hits, including a triple, and Daryl George again with another three RBIs. Oh, so, so he had a good couple, good couple <laughs> games. Um, game four. Yeah, game four. Uh, Sydney once again for the third time in the series scored five runs to take the win. So it was another five-three scoreline as it was in game one. Yep. Um, and uh, the unluckiest pitcher in the league, Wayne Lundgren, this time changed things and, and actually picked up the win. Got a W? Yeah. Well, and, your way, no. and again, with his other wins, it, it probably wasn't his best pitching performance in the year. His, his better performances have resulted in either no decisions or the unluckiest of losses. Yeah. So yep. he, um, yeah, he, he got the Solid. job done. Yeah, and it was quite not, uh, they really spread the load offensively. A lot of guys getting multiple hit games, so Tyler Bortney, Michael Fasado, Jacob Eunice, Max Brennan, all got either two or three hits each. Yeah. So they really just spread the load. Um, so, I mean, the wash-up really wasn't a, a huge scoring series for either team. No one really got overpowered either way, but um, Sydney came around with a 3-1. Kind of for Sydney, like, just be happy with that. 3-1, yeah. comfortable, keeps them up there. Melbourne, they're in all sorts. Oh, yeah. They, yeah, I mean... You can only really say so many to... times could win a series, but they just can't win a series. They're starting to look in trouble. Yeah, they they just get too far out of touch. So, I mean, from, from the Blue Sox side of things, um, like I say, they didn't score a mountain of runs, but it was good to see that they scored enough runs to win three games without Hoskins and Josh Dean yeah. carrying the load in the middle of the lineup. Good to see some other names pop up. Yep. Yeah, so, so for me, that, that was the, the big thing there. And as I say, Trent D'Antonio is just, he's just rolling at the moment. His, his, his average is just climbs, climbs, climbs every week at the moment. And it keeps him in touch with the league leaders, mm -hmm. so still sort of sitting there. Just, yeah, that's just right. Just lying in weight. Yeah, so that was. Um, a, a, a big factor is, is him at the top, obviously, but there's, at the bottom of the lineup, um, I've already mentioned them, guys like Brennan, Eunice, Courtney, these guys are starting to chip in now. That, that's what they need. They, they need some more contributors, and, and it's just starting to happen. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. Aces, Matty Larkin's good. Again. Some good pitching performances, but just cannot score enough to win. No. Can't get the runners in. No. I don't know what to do with them. What are we going to do with them, Jenga? I'll, Even I'll, I'll Matty Merrington, uh, who's their biggest booster, went all the way, travelled to Sydney yeah. to try and oh, really? get him a series win. Yeah, he's a Collingwood supporter, but we don't hold it against him. Oh, so he went might. all the way to see him, uh, see him play, and they still didn't get it done, so I don't know. He does cook a good barbecue, though. I'll give him cooks props for that. Cooks awesome bar. You like, if you like your pulled pork and your ribs, he's your guy. Absolutely. Nice like. pulled pork and ribs. Yep. So Sydney, uh, excellent again, right up there. Melbourne, back to the drawing board. I think so. They're, they're looking forward to a Christmas spell, I think. Cheers. Why not? The Arca Bar is a popular destination in Adelaide for all different types of people to come and watch their sport, have dinner, enjoy a live band upstairs, listen to some acoustic music or just sit back and relax and enjoy a beautiful room in one of our accommodation suites. Sporty's Bar is one of the best sports bar in Australia and we actually pride ourselves on always being the, having the leading edge for someone to come and watch sports. We have a great menu in the sports bar. You can range anything from hamburgers to hot dogs to the classic pub food. Um, we have an outside area which can cater for all different types of weather. There's also the TAB auditorium for people to use. The Arca Bar's got a great feel. It's got people, it's got music, great bar staff. You can always get a cold beer and you know, there's plenty of TAB facilities. The hum and the vibrancy of the place is great. Our lounge bar is a, has a great ambience to it. If you're looking for a glass of wine, some fine dining, it's, it's the place to be at the Arca Bar Hotel, featuring our fantastic enomatic machine, which uh, hosts a lot of the leading wines in South Australia. In the restaurant, we have a, a little bit of a different menu, but the Sporties menu is available in the restaurant. Uh, and we do lots of daily specials. We even pride ourselves on doing some really good Asian dishes. If 
find the Arkabar Hotel on the corner of Fullerton and Glad Osmond Road. Come down and enjoy yourself. Now, Boris, uh, the final series for the week here was uh, Perth Heat versus Adelaide Bike, um, featuring Darth Vader. Darth was there, Luke was there, mm -hmm. Star Wars City. Uh, actually, Chewy? Darth. Chewy make an appearance? Chewy uh, didn't make an appearance, unfortunately. It was a little bit warm, it was 40. I think oh. Chewy might not make it. What could have got there? But uh, Darth was there and sucked in the national anthem. Didn't hiccup, As but he was pretty damn good. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, to the baseball, Darth, that to, would have been good. To the baseball, um, <laughs> Perth Adelaide, obviously a big series with Adelaide just a little bit off the pace and Perth chasing. Mm -hmm. Adelaide got through three one, but it didn't have it all their own way. It was a bit of a scrappy affair. Yeah. Friday night's game, Adelaide got out early to a two zip lead. Things were looking pretty good. Mm -hmm. Sort of had control of the game, yeah. but then uh, Alan de San Miguel, yeah. de San was the man. Hit a three run Johnson. Uh, put him up 3-2. He's been he's been hitting a lot of homers. Lately. He has hit the yeah. homers. He's, he's got a barrel chest, that boy. He's, yeah. <laughs> he's got the chest for it, but it was a yeah, sensational knock. And then after that, uh, Adelaide sort of fell apart. They kicked the ball around a little bit in the infield. Mm -hmm. Got to uh, feel a bit sorry for shortstop Mason Picard. Yeah. Not uh, not Star Trek Picard, but uh, yeah, Mason Picard. Mm -hmm. he, uh, he kicked it around. He'd made four errors. And uh, I think yeah. lost a bit of confidence. And Perth rolled over, took the game 7 2. Yep. Uh, Schmidt just rolled on the hill. Mm. Uh, big lefty, did a good job. Dallas Gallant was a bit stiff, he threw okay. Yep. But uh, yeah, it went down 7 2. Yeah, that's Dallas Gallant's second loss of the season. Yeah, Daniel Schmidt, you talk about him just getting it done. He's, yeah, he's, he's just, just the ultimate workhorse for spots, Perth and has been for years, hasn't he? He's ground ball, mm. throws the spots, he's fantastic. Yeah. So yeah, so Perth took the first game, mm -hmm. looking pretty good. Then uh, Twin Bill on Saturday in the extreme heat, it was uh, oh. up in the 40s, 41, 42. Mm -hmm. uh, I think actually maybe 44 have got to. I think 44. It was pretty correct, damn yeah. hot, so the four o'clock game would have been steamy. Mm -hmm. um, but Edwin Carl on the hill. Does like the heat. Don't know what happened. Didn't happen for Edwin. I, I didn't believe Another it fantasy happening. disaster. I did. <laughs> <laughs> he got pounded for six runs in three innings. Uh, Corey Lyon, uh, Conor O'Gorman, Two Glenelg boys. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. Both homered for the bite and they racked up, I think, three hits each. So yeah. they had a, had a field day. Bite had 14 hits in total. Would have been a big house, big uh, party in that household. That party night, in the household, the, I think those so. Those roomies. And Steve Chambers on the hill, mm -hmm. still getting it done. Six hits, uh, gave up, got a six win, sorry, for the season. Yeah. Uh, gave up, got seven strikeouts and five digs. He's been. So Steve was excellent. He's been one of the recruits of the year. Hasn't yeah, he really taken absolutely. taking the ball in the big games? If not the best he's thrown quite often the season. Uh, the series I've never not not this one, but so, just yeah. doing it all year. He's been been awesome. Mm. So yeah, so it was one one. Mm -hmm. Went to late game. This is a this is a crowd pleaser. Uh, Bite came back. They were seven three down, yep. and they stole it. Uh, pinched it eight seven late. Ben Shorto came in, got up four hits in a row when uh, Perth led 7-3 uh, yeah. and they weren't like smash, they were just like up the middle, up the middle, up the middle, mm -hmm. sort of sink, death by single. Yep. Four on the trot. C9 ground uh, balls. Yep. Carell Prime made a made an error, extended the inning. Mm -hmm. And uh, Travis Demerit singled off uh, big Warwick Salpole, mm -hmm. making his first appearance for the year. Yeah. And speaking to Warwick, we had an interview with Warwick, which you'll see uh, later in the show. Yes. Stay tuned for that. Yep. But uh, yeah, like they just singled uh, Mark Wick, Corey Lyon, Got on base and the Travis Demerit single put him up eight seven. Yep. Didn't didn't give up after that. Uh, bullpen Luke Van Mill. The big man. Party liaison. Our boy. The biggest of big men. Biggest, yeah, he was he was really good. And then Cody Kersey came in and got his eighth save for the yes. season. Yep. So Adelaide really they pinched it. They really did. Got out of jail. Yeah. When, when you come back, seven three is a pretty big uh, deficit to come back from. It is. Yeah. But certainly, uh, you know, with that bullpen normally. Mm. And uh, late in the game, Adelaide got it done. So yeah. two one lead. They were they were the crowd was pumped. Yep. The beers were flowing. It was forty four. So you know, had to keep hydrated. You got to drink something, don't you? Yeah. So that was sensational. Thank then you. thank you, the Arkham Bar. Came out on Sunday. Uh, there was a brilliant pitching duel. Big Red, Matty Williams. Yep. Started for Adelaide. And Tom Bailey, who had a great start last week for the Heat. Yeah, he did, didn't he? Started for the Heat, both went seven innings, shut out ball. So the game was tied, seven in the eighth. Both teams had a chance to score, had first and second, none out. Um, Adelaide failed to score, and then Perth had loaded bases, one out. Uh, Mincy went, took took um, Matty Williams off the hill, yep. and went to the uh, lefty Lee. Yes. And he did a great job, got, got the two outs. Went through a shutout ball, top of the ninth, Perth nothing, and then bottom of the ninth, uh, the fast ball from Edgar Val relieving. Yes. Or Vale, Vale, I think it's Vale. He uh, threw the fasty, Tommy Bryce turned on it and just deposited it into the right field. 
the seats. Yeah. Crowd went mad. Walk off. Bunch of Air Hawaiian shirts. Never seen so many Hawaiian shirts flying up. <laughs> Since you've been in Honolulu, mate, they were just going off. Jumping up and down, and one of the boys handed Bryce a beer as he high five. Bryce put the beer down. The crowd even more wild. You got to replace it. Was those unbelievable. Swords. It was a fantastic moment. Yeah. Threw the Coopers down. Uh, yeah, sensational. No, so, good on him. He, he's definitely a character, Bryce too. So he is a character. Yeah, he, uh, he would have loved it. He, he yeah. was loving it. So <laughs> Adelaide three mm-hmm. one. Really a tough series, and uh, they they just got it done when they had to get well, it done. They'd be happy with that too, because I know we've said every week that Perth are due to break out, but. By getting another series win over them, it's just putting their breakout back that little bit gap. further, and um, I think that, I think the bite would be stoked with that. Yeah. Well, let's face it, the bite had a one-seven start. Mm-hmm. You know, with all those one run yeah. losses early. Now they're eighteen and seventeen, mm-hmm. over five hundred for the first time. Um, that's a pretty good comeback for them. And they're just looking a lot more settled now. I mean, obviously we're we're still sort of playing the rotating shortstop with uh, between Pickard and Corey Lyon at the moment. Corey did a pretty good job there yeah. uh, defensively and obviously so hit the grand knocks. slam. Yep. Um, picked it up a little bit, which he will be wrapped in because he's a gamer. He mm. loves loves it. Yeah. So yeah, they they found a little bit there. Yeah. But 29 hits in the double header, they pumped out. So. Yeah. And like you say, in trying conditions too, that was really, really hot. It so. was. It was stinking hot. Matty Williams, quality star, mm-hmm. fantastic for him. And a lesser lights, we saw it, uh, O'Gorman line. It wasn't yeah. just petty, you know, it's been... Yeah, that's right. Quick, uh, got, went 5 for 11, had 5 walks, so mm-hmm. kept getting on base. And Tommy Bryce with 6 hits and a massive walk off. Yeah, the biggest hit a lot. They now come up against Canberra. Uh, in, I think two out of the next three series, so it's, really it's going to be a make or break for Adelaide. Yeah, if, they can, if they can keep playing good ball, take mm. some games off Canberra, yeah. they'll be right back amongst it. Sure. What about the heaters? Well, it's a series they got away for them, really, wasn't it? It is, it really did. I mean, they won Friday night and they led 7 3 in game three. Yeah. So that 3 yeah. 1 easily could have been flipped over for them. So They'd be really, wouldn't have been too. They wouldn't have been happy heaters on the plane going home, I can Ro- tell you. Ro- Right. Unhappy heaters no, no. or happy but, uh, callers, I'm not sure. Yeah, but but happy. There's almost a, a, a bit of the um, the same issue that Melbourne's having, just not hitting in those situations. They had a chance yeah. for the bases load and one out in the, that game on Sunday in the nail biter and just couldn't get it done. So, um, Husey got the hook on Sunday and sat down yeah. because he went uh, one for 11. His yeah, average is down to like 177, which is unheard of for him. He, he's, he's waiting for just that. Just can't get him going. He's waiting for that Christmas feed to turn things around like. well we do speak to Warwick about uh, what gets him going after Christmas so stay tuned for that he, he lets you in on the secret well there we go we'll wait for that one stay tuned but yeah good series stick yeah. around for the Wazza interview and uh, Adelaide Bite really good series at I'm Darth would have been loving it yeah it was they used to force I'm pretty sure must have used something Oh, Boris, on to the fight. Hang on. Do we really need to go on with empty beers? This is not Christmas. So you want to use the force, let's have a go. That'll work. Hey, how about that? Well played. Carry on. Okay, on to the flamethrowers. Okay, for this week, my guy is going to be uh, Matty Williams, Adelaide Bight. He was good. Oh, Real good. Love Matty Williams, competitor, mm-hmm. the professor. Yes. Just went out there, seven shutout innings. Five hits, one walk, and six strikeouts. Mm-hmm. Kept the bite in the game for Bryce to walk off and smash Coopers. Yes. And oh, and, and Matty Williams, he had a couple of starts like that where he has had some yeah. absolute dominant ones. He's so, a really um, good pitcher. Really good pitcher. Yeah, very handy going in the second half. What about who are you going with? Well, his um, his counterpart, Tom Bailey. It was it was just a great it really was game a good of matchup. baseball. Yeah. So I'm just going to throw him in. Um, like Williams, seven shutout innings, only four hits that he gave up with one walk and five K. So basically, they mirrored each other really. It was a really good game to watch. Yeah. If, you like, if you're a purist, you like your pitching duels, mm-hmm. which I do. Yes. It was uh, really fantastic to watch. And of course, the walk-off was the gravy. It was just a, a, a great great baseball game. It really was. Yeah. Nicey, Bricey. Uh, Honourable mentions. Yeah, well, um, with the pitches. Yeah, well, I mentioned Matthew Ray already. His start, first start for the Blue Sox. Not a bad first start effort. Yeah. And, um, not, not dominant by any stretch, but a good solid start, five innings. Uh, all we already spoken about it, six Ks, four hits, one earned run, um, and to, to get the win. But Craig Anderson for me, the old uh, the old stager. Mm-hmm. Seven shutout digs, complete game, uh, short game, and got the win, he was good. Yep, um, I'm gonna throw Matty Larkins in as well. Every week, he's yeah. around the mark. Yeah, he? dominant again, it, oh, it didn't throw the complete game shutout, so hard to, hard to back up on that, but uh, another seven innings and, yeah. and a win. Yep, Steve Kent, Fitty, 
Oh, Fitty Kent. Having a great Isn't he every week? Yeah, having a great year. We about Steve a lot, but he has been very impressive this season. Um, so, Steve, yep. speaking of Steve's. Chambers, throw him in. Was he Why not? 6 and 0 now? 6 and something. We'll go with that. <laughs> yeah, I think he is 6 and 0. But, um, and I mentioned it earlier, for, for me, he's, he's close to the recruit of the year. He is. He yeah. has been great. He's really sort of uh, kept Adelaide in everything. Mm. Every game he's pitched has been fantastic. Yep. Seven strikeouts too, he's been whipping dudes. Yeah. Top of his game, yep. impressive. And Scotty Cohn, same for Canberra. David's lad. Yeah, David's boy, mm -hmm. Scotty. Uh, the Cone man, he's been most impressive. He went uh, six digs, uh, four strikeouts, no runs. Yep. And the last one, because uh, I don't think there's many left that we can put in there. I think we've got a few, but it was... Uh, Wayne, Wayne Lundgren. He's, he's having a great year, and the numbers just aren't, aren't showing it in the, yeah. in the win and loss column. So he did get a win, so he gets a mention. Fair enough. Hot hitters. Hot hitters. Well, I'm, I'm just going to repeat my script from last week. Put oh, yeah. Logan Moon from the Aces. Logan Moon? Logan the Moon shot? What do you do? Hey, we, this week, um, 8 for 16. 8 for 16, a couple of triples, a couple of RBIs. Um, they lose the Series 3-1, but he still was... Easily the best guy out there for the Aces. Yeah, him and DG, uh, Daryl George, mm -hmm. very good. It's been sort of Vavra, Vavra, Vavra fest every week. Yeah. But those guys are really good in the weekend. Unfortunately for them, didn't translate to wins, yeah. but uh, they did a really good job. That's right. oh, Moon's December so far. Uh, he's, he's been a little bit like D'Antonio. The, the last few weeks have just been great. Yeah, but losing? Yes. Blue Moon. Indeed. Who you got? Who's your hot uh, For mine, Rolly Unro. For the yep. Bandits. I mm -hmm. mean, they've got a lot of great hitters in that team, but he's yep. been setting the table. 8 for 15 on the weekend, mm -hmm. number two spot. Yep. Um, he's a big reason why the Bandits are winning. Oh, for sure. Setting the table, blokes are knocking him in, and they're just one game behind the Cavs, thanks to him and his mates. Weird. He's getting on base all the time in front of Nielsen, Williams, those sort of blokes. And Lutz. Him in. Now Lutz. Him. So, uh, yeah, Riley Unro, That's very good player. Thumbs up. Well, I was, I, my first honourable mention, you've already mentioned him. Can't help myself. Daryl George. It's the hot rods. He gets me every time. Bowling <laughs> green. He had a great weekend. Yeah, he did. 14, four RBIs. And, and like I said before, home run short of a cycle, which yep. is a uh, pretty tough thing to do. Yeah, no, really good. Uh, and a couple of other blokes. Conor O'Gorman for Adelaide. Yeah. Uh, he's had a couple of really good series. Mm -hmm. And since they've struggled a bit with Landon and Anders being injured, yeah. he's picked up the slack. Obviously, he went 6 for 12 on the weekend, had a home run, 4 RBI. I was going to say, he's been hitting a few long balls, which he's probably not in the lineup to do. Not but he had known a, for it. He had yeah. a multi home run game uh, a couple of weeks ago, and then another one this week, and a few other knocks as well. So, um, yeah, he's been going all right. Really good. Anyone else you like? I don't know how many times I can mention him in this episode. Terence Trent. Terence Trent <laughs> Tantonio. Um, well, his, his average, it, it wasn't that long ago we were talking about Sydney regulars. No one was up over about 270, 280. Yep. He's now sitting at 333. He's been absolutely on fire. So he's... Um... <laughs> Sorry. I just lost it because I was looking at some of the uh, names of the songs down there. No, a couple of Christmas carols. How about carols. some Christmas carols? Give me, give me some Christmas it's carols Christmas for us. Christmas time of year. I reckon uh, Calvin Drummond. Little drum and boy. Little drum and boy. Yeah. But up a pump, pump. Yeah. Calvin's actually heading home pretty soon. Got one more series and he's heading home. Yeah. He's been really impressive. Mm -hmm. So best of luck to uh, little drum and boy. Yes. As he heads home. Any uh, anyone from the bite roster that you can see getting into a carol? I reckon uh, Travis Tingle might be uh, Tingle Bells. That works. <laughs> what about yourself? Anything Great. else? A couple um, of Canberra boys, maybe. Well, I, you know what? I'm actually going to go down the list. Because you know you're going to lose it <laughs> if you do the one with Phil Kish. <laughs> I'm going to lose that one. Um, I like the one that uh, Mariah Carey made so famous. Ah, so, uh, all I want for Christmas is Woo. <laughs> well, there it is. William Woo. Who wouldn't William want him Wu. for Christmas? <laughs> he's, a little champion. He's been great. He's a little champion. <clears throat> Why are on the Melbourne guys? Yes. They might have Frosty, but what about Hoshi the Snowman? Hoshi the Snowman. I'm sure he gets that a lot. Also heading there. home from uh, Melbourne pretty mm -hmm. soon, which is a bit of a shame for them because he's been pretty impressive. Yeah. Oh, he's... he's been great for them, so I'm interested to see what they do behind the dish when he goes. Alright, well I'm going to try and get through this, but <laughs> for the Canberra fans out there, <laughs> I saw Mummy Phil kissing Santa Claus. I've got, I've got nothing. It's the greatest <laughs> greatest Christmas song ever. I haven't heard it, I can't Kevin Wilson. Me. Come on. <laughs> so there you go. That's it. And <laughs> maybe one for the old school, old school ABL fans. Yes. What do you think? Little Saint Click. Click. 
That's not what I was going for. What are you going for? <laughs> going for a Gary White Christmas. Gary White Christmas. Old We're going old, old school. Yeah, sensational. All right. Let's bring it back to some so, normality. Let's bring it down. Okay, this weekend, some massive, massive series. Mm -hmm. uh, predictions. First one, we've got uh, Canberra coming to Adelaide. Yes. Obviously, for Adelaide, they if they can take a few games from Canberra, they're just sitting outside the top three at the minute. Yeah. So, how and, do you see it? And Well, Canberra have come back down to the to the pack a little bit, so it, yep. it, it is a huge, huge series, really, for both teams. It is, it is. So, um, what do you got? I think I'm going to have to go with a split. Split? I, I can see Adelaide have been really good at home. And they have, um, the record at home is pretty impressive. Yeah, so when, you've, uh, when you're rolling out, uh, well, Steve Chambers has just been great, so yeah. for starters, he's up against Kent and Grenning, I know, and these guys, but I'm, I'm going to go with a split. You'd think Matty Williams would probably earn himself another start. I have to, after that. Well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'm, I'm with so. you. Yeah. I'm calling the split as well. Mm -hmm. I think uh, Canberra are a really impressive team, but yeah. I think Adelaide at home, you've got to give them some credit, so 2-2 two, two for me. Sydney and Brisbane, up, up in Bandit Land. Sydney and Brisbane, wow. Both teams pretty in, in good form, mm -hmm. really good form. I think in Brizzy, the bats just seem to go off a bit up there, That'd so be. I'll probably go Brizzy 3-1 for that one. I was thinking the same thing. As, as good as those Sydney arms have been, and the bats are starting to warm up, um, to me, at this very point in time, Brisbane are the best team in the comp on form. So. I think, yeah, they certainly on form, they are. It's going to be a ripper series. You, you could see Sydney getting two, but I yep. think Brizzy 3 one's probably I'll, the smart money. I'll take them 3 one. Yeah, more responsibly. Last series, Melbourne in Perth. Melbourne. The Aces, can they? Can they? They're struggling at the best of times. Um, you know what, I'm I'm struggling, I, I, I don't know how to pick this one, I'm going to go to our, um, our celebrity expert, Maccabi Diva. Maccabi, what do you think? Oh yeah, okay. I Straight from the horse's mouth, close. I think that was Perth 3-1. I think you're exactly on the money. Mm -hmm. You'd never argue with a uh, with a horse, mate. Not, not a three-time cup winner. Three-time cup winner. I think you're right, I think Perth at home, mm -hmm. uh, they, they They'll get the chocolates. Yep. Melbourne don't travel well, and they just haven't. They can't win a series. No. So I think you're right. I, Perth have to win. Yeah, and, and can, can Edwin have two bad starts in a row? Oh, of course he can't. Don't. Not a chance. And uh, was as was as told you in the interview, mm -hmm. they've uh, they'll have their special boat trip. Gets them over the line every year. Sixteen and four, and fifteen and five, the last two times yep. post boat trip. They'll, maybe, be, they'll be wrong. They may have needed to bring it to early December this maybe year. Maybe they should have had their boat trip. Oh, well, Bramie Brisbane had their boat out very early in the season. Oh, look what was done for them. Look what was done for them. Yeah. Absolutely. Very cool. Well, Excellent. there it is. Okay, Thank so, you, McCoy. Yep. Good to talk to the horse. So, wrapping this up, uh, don't forget, hit us up on Twitter, get on the Facebook page, be interactive. We're really struggling to get some information out of you guys. Let us know what you think. Mm -hmm. Tell us what you like, tell us what you don't like. And remember, we've got Monica Madness going, so the best name in the ABL. Yep, there's plenty uh, out there. Optimus Prime's up there. We've got Takayuchi Yamaguchi. <laughs> nice. Who's up? Nice. <laughs> He's up there. And Aaron Suki's joined the void. He he won the uh, the Blue Sox round. Yep. So we've still got. I think Canberra and Adelaide. Man, there's some names there. Plenty to so, choose. So uh, stay on it. Keep in touch. And finally, we had a competition this week. The winner of our yes for the cap. Flex and Shield cap. It's uh, Robert underscore Trim. So Robert, we'll be in touch. Got you, Rob. Get your details, and uh, we'll send you your hat. So thanks for being involved, everyone that uh, had a crack at that. Yeah. And don't forget that uh, all we want for Christmas is woo. So this is Brooke Boris Kilpatrick and Jamie Jane Cloden signing off. We'll catch you next week. Thanks Merry for being Christmas. with us. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.